the people of Ukraine are fighting for freedom and democracy, not just for Ukraine, but for the whole of Europe, because that is what President Putin is challenging. And absolutely, if people want to support that struggle, I would support them in doing that. So you support? Absolutely, if that's what they want to do. I, I, do, uh, I do support that. And of course, uh, that is something that people can make their own decisions about. Well, what we're seeing is we're seeing that the Ukrainian forces are continuing to resist uh, Russian advances. And last night, the G7 agreed that we would cut access for Russia to the SWIFT banking system, that we would target the Russian central bank, that we'll be putting more sanctions on oligarchs and companies. And you can see the reaction in the international markets. You can see the damage already to the Russian economy. But I fear, Trevor, that this will be a long haul. I mean, this could well be uh, the beginning of the end for Putin. I urge the Russians not to escalate this conflict, but we do need to be prepared for Russia to seek to use uh, even worse weapons. We are looking at what more we can do, Trevor. Why and the Prime to... Minister was very clear last night that we well, will be welcoming refugees from Ukraine. Now, if the Russians are serious about negotiations, they need to remove their troops from Ukraine. They cannot negotiate with a gun to the head of the Ukrainians. And so I would support the idea of having ceilings on how much oil and gas is imported from Russia. So over time, we cut uh, the dependency right across Europe. Robert. I've compiled a hit list of oligarchs, people who... Is Abramovich on it? I'm not going to say who is on the list, but what I can tell you is there are over 100 billionaires in Russia. Uh, we have compiled a hit list of oligarchs. We're working through and putting the cases together. And every few weeks, we will sanction new oligarchs. And yes, there will be an economic cost here in Britain.